Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you, Jamie, man. I let you bang. I let you bang. I let you bang. Greetings, Mary's and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? And we got Joker. All right. Hey, everybody, welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter. I'm here with Jason Mayhem Miller. Legend, May, legend, the legend, the uh, legend so, of the fall, baby. Like I don't Brad even, Pitt. Remember that movie? Oh my god, I feel like him every day fly fishing. I don't even, dude, it's crazy, man. Brad Pitt, he, he don't, he, he can't even see his children. He adopted like six children, nah. or he had a, he adopted like a couple. Nah. Of them. I'm not sure how many he adopted, but he's not allowed to see them. Like, and the people are they're changing their names to not be Pitt, which is well, I'm changing my. I'm changing my last name to Pitt, so it's weird how that works out. The yin and yang of the universe. But this is crazy, man. Like, you think a guy has everything, and he does. A, a movie star, Angelina Jolie, he's got rich, he's got this, he's got that. Got all these things in the world, and then his kids don't want to be associated with him. That, that's got that's got to kill you. And that, Listen, that, bud, I, you know what? It's like one of those things, problems that we all wish we had. We had so much money and such an awesome lifestyle that everything works out so good that you can just neglect your kids. <laughs> you know? I mean, it sucks, but I guess that's some problem that most of us don't get to know. You know, I don't understand what's going on in Brad Pitt's life that's so stressful and uh, making him turn his back on his kids somehow. Or, or hey, flip it on this one, okay? I know we're not a celebrity exactly podcast, but how about Angelina Jolie might be such a needy, psycho, crazy, everything is like I'm the queen of the entire universe that she just drives him bananas and he can't stand hanging out with her and he just is over her and like uh, the the kids are like siding with her. You know? Yeah, but why are they siding know. with her? I mean, a lot of times, no matter, a lot of times the kids side with the dad or they side with whoever's right. Do they? I don't uh, think so. The kids side with whoever brainwashes them dude the kids the kids side with whoever is constantly uh giving them ponies and That's i don't know i you know I, I can't i can't pretend to understand what it's like to be a uh, a a a list celebrity you know i mean i'm down here swimming around in the z list celebrity uh, uh you know what i mean keep trying to keep my head above water why bad pit is on the you know uh his, his kids hate him because they won't let him Right in the cockpit on the private jet. It's a very strange life. Did I tell you the story about when I met Macaulay Culkin? I like went to his house. Oh, what? Were you with Michael Jackson? No, I was. Well, I wanted to ask him about that a hundred times, but I'm like, do not mention Michael Jackson. Like, don't go to his house. Oh. But um, Devin Sawa, nice guy. Devin Sawa who's an actor. He trains. He's, him and Macaulay Culkin were like good friends, and they were going to do a podcast for his new network. He he had like a thing where he was making fun of Goop. You know Goop, which is that like Gwyneth Paltrow? Oh, yeah. He's doing like a parody of it. So he hired me and Devin to be to do a podcast there. So we were meeting with Macaulay Culkin. And I guess this wasn't like his main house. It was like a little studio. It was like a two bedroom in Studio City. And I show up at like three in the afternoon with Devin. He's wearing pajamas, foot like foot on, full on footy pajamas, like footy, footy pajamas. He's got nail oh, polish yeah. on. Uh, he couldn't have been nicer, just the nicest guy. So I'm sitting down across the table with him and there are all these little wrestling figures everywhere. And, um, I'm like, wait a minute. For some reason I remembered strike force. I go, is that Rick Bartel and Tito Santana? So right away we just bonded because we both knew strike. Like he couldn't believe. Yeah, dude. And we talked about wrestling for like 10, 15 minutes. Dude. Then he told, I told him I was a comedian. He told me like 30 minutes of anal sex jokes. Like he had so many anal sex jokes. It was one after the other after the other. They were all good, but it was just weird because I, I, you know, I never met him before. So it was weird having the kid from Home Alone just tell me anal sex jokes, right? <laughs> then uh, 
right before he goes, Hey man, I have a great chicken cross the road joke. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta hear this. And he goes, why did the chicken cross the road? And he goes, I'm like, why? He goes to get to your house. I'm like, okay. And then he goes, knock, knock. And I go, who's there? He said, the chicken. I, all right. That was, <laughs> he said he made it up. Bruh. <laughs> Dude. Bless his heart. Bless you, know his that, heart. you know what that is, right? You know what that is? That is the joke of a man who has been catered to hand and foot his entire life. And nobody not laughed at his stupid joke. I might have slapped Macaulay Culkin right in his face. Like, Jesus Christ, bro. Get it together, dude. Learn some new comedy. Uh, you should have coached them, bro. You could you could make Macaulay Culkin a world class stand up if you just give him like you know just the the tools of the trade, bro. Just a little bit. You shouldn't have you shouldn't have laughed at that. You shouldn't have laughed. It's like me. It's like me seeing a guy do uh, arm bar uh, combination to a triangle, totally wrong, and me being like, oh, okay, that's really good. No. No, it's not good. You gotta like keep it real with that guy. Wait, oh man, I'm calling Don uh, Fry because Don's Don's supposed to do the show, and then I have to I not text Don. I then have to call him, uh, and then what's gonna happen is he's gonna Just get a fill in, bro. Call one of the fucking other Stooges. Where's Where's old Sean McCorky at? Uh, I, 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 I might as well I, yeah. call him up. Yeah, uh, you know, call another one of your Down syndrome buddies. But what happens I is Don the only is one. Like a, I can't be the only one with this many chromosomes on the call. Meanwhile, Don's gonna call me in like in like a year in like an hour and go, what time yeah. does this go? That's that's that he goes, I know. my bad. I'm sorry, man. Bye, Bob, bye. Come on, bro. Listen, with the amount of head trauma involved with uh, this career that we've chosen for ourselves, you know, you get you get an hour delay here and there sometimes, you know. Sometimes you're an hour in the future. Sometimes you're an hour in the past. You just got to keep it real with the kids out there listening. That you know, if you're gonna have to, uh, choose this career path, there's gonna be some hiccups along the way. You know, you're gonna well, have. I, a, I told Don the only the thing because, like, obviously, we got to talk about Trump and Dana White and Kid Rock and 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 Hulk Hogan. And what? And we got. I know. About, we need. We need. It's we like, hey, well, we need. We need John Rule's opinion on this too. Well, I told I told Don, I called him, I said, bro, you got to, I mean, look, Mayhem, you got to admit, like, Trump looked pretty fucking cool when he got shot, but fell down, not, not, came up. Not pretty cool. Not pretty cool. Like, pretty much the coolest I've ever seen a president be, dude. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? I don't care what you say about what politics or what. I don't think Joe Biden jumping up off the damn mat with the pump in his fist after getting shot no, in the ear. No, all of a sudden, I don't no, see it. I no, don't see no. it. No, Trump got shot and Biden fell down. That's actually, that's yeah. how crazy. Yeah. But like, I go, the only thing cooler than would have been if Don Fry was the president, because he would have like caught the bullet with his teeth and, yeah. and then spit it I back agree. out at the shooter. Like that's the only I agree. more more manly thing. Like Don would have done that. Like kind of how like Ace Ventura, did. remember Ace Ventura was driving? Oh yeah, I remember, <laughs> bud. I remember well. But yeah, all of a sudden Trump gets shot and then turns into the si Jersey Shore situation and starts fist bumping. Like someone should just like <laughs> play one of the that like music from the Jersey Shore. Um, but yeah, right now, uh, so last night was the Republican National Convention. I didn't end up going. They called to see if I was on. I, I made it to like the short list. How are they gonna? How are they gonna tease you with that, bro? They're gonna was, tease you, and was, then you don't get to go. I, I'm bummed out. I, no, it, it, what happens happens. But uh, I gotta say, like whether you like Trump or, or not, okay, the the convention was was entertaining as hell. I mean, you look at the lineup yesterday, where they had Tucker Carlson, Kid Rock, Hulk Hogan, Dana White, Donald Trump. I mean, Gutfeld said he's like he's gonna have speakers. He has, he has pirates. He goes. He said he has pirates. I mean, Hulk Hogan up there was because he was still in character he didn't break it wasn't terry was this isn't terry norris or what's his name terry something uh i forgot his his real name um but he's up there and he's like terry Balea. Balea. But, he, but but he said like first they were going to him before he he like spoke and he was like you know i remember where i was when i saw that bullet fly the trumps and my hero and i knew the hulkster and i'm like oh my god he's he's legitimately in character right now this is not like 
Dude, and then he goes up there and he's like, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, I know. What you gonna do when Trumpomania runs wild on you? I don't know. I, I kind of mixed up Macho Man in there. My bad. But Dude, yeah, he... Hilarious. Yeah, we live in a simulation and this thing is badass, bro. It was legitimately like a South Park or like a Simpsons episode where you would watch that because then he he took off his shirt and he's like, he goes, all you drug dealers and all you this and all that. I know. I know. Yeah, that was bizarre. Yeah, we, it was one of the rare instances in MMA Roasted where I think we should insert that uh, into the edit because that is a weird one. That 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 was... It, you, it blew my wig back, bro. I feel like shaving my uh, shaving my head into a, like a hot dog, uh, ale pattern baldness sort of thing, and going uh, Trump a maniac right now. Dude, I was crying, level. laughing. I was yeah. laughing out loud. Uh, it, it definitely brought me back to my childhood of being a Hulk Hogan fan. Although, it, you gotta admit, if he would have then all of a sudden like did the ultimate NWO promo where he took it off and he had, he had like a Biden shirt on. And all of a sudden, wow. you, and then you right. have like da -da 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 -da, like that that NWO music, and then like Buff Bagwell. Oh, like, what if not? Nah, even Bagwell. better, even better, even better if uh, Joe Biden's music came on, ba -ba -ba -da, and he just came out all cocaine up on COVID, and then just like starts like fist bumping, like I could get shot too. Ah. <laughs> I don't know, Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe, Joe Biden, you know, uh, needs he needs a, a comeback on this uh, pro wrestling circuit. Uh, who the hell? Man, we're gonna have to resurrect the Macho Man Randy Savage to, to cut promos for you know what I mean, or or just get the skeleton of Andre the Giant to do a promo for Joe Biden at this point. I I, I don't see a, a a path to victory right now. Dude, this I is would, a political podcast. I don't now? We, got, I mean, we, have, we have a lot to cover. Doing. We have we have a lot to cover. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, seriously, you're absolutely right. Um, he's gonna need like big Papa Pump. You ever see that thing where he does that like whole mask? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he... but I I ran into Big Papa Pump in Atlanta before I, at the strip clubs. He was legitimately Papa Pump, bro. That guy was he was not playing a character. That guy was enormous. I I don't know. He wasn't that tall, like impressively tall. But this guy was just a monstrosity of human scientific engineering. I don't know. Did you guys hang out? Did you guys hang out? Did you guys hang out? Yeah, we hung out there, throwing money around and shit. It was wild, dude. I, I, I never see. It was. I was too young to even process what was going on. But yeah, no, it is. Uh, the whole thing is like, cause, and then I wrote a joke. I go, I go next month. Uh, Biden's gonna have the Undertaker with him. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, he's just gonna pop out. He's gonna slam mankind through the damn table. Oh wait! Dude. Oh yeah! Hey, did you just say Joe Biden has the Undertaker? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Joe Biden's gonna Joe Biden's gonna have the Undertaker with the yeah. any day now. Yeah, yeah. No, the whole thing is it's ridiculous. But Biden tried. He actually the other day on Twitter he started making jokes. He goes, "I'm sick," yeah. right? So uh, everyone's like, and then he goes, "I'm sick of Elon Musk and his friends trying to buy." Like that was the next tweet. So every and people thought he was really sick. And they were like, but he is, he's got COVID. I just I, heard this. I know, I know. But I'm like, like, he should go all the way. Like I have AIDS, like white house AIDS that helped me. I mean, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, you should write for him, bro. You're, oh. you're the best. I'm like, hey, I'm, you know what's I'm weird? Bi that, bipartisan. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think this is the day that the podcast turns the corner where we just talk about uh culture instead of, uh, MMA. I, I don't know. I think this is the day. This I think is the day so, that yeah. we never go back from. What the? What is happening? What is happening right now? Dude, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Hey. And then and then Dana goes up there, and even Dana. Yeah, what did he say? He he had a good speech. He said, you know, he was uh, on vacation with his family when Trump called him, and he said, uh, "Hey man, can you make a speech?" And and then Trump's like, you know, sure. And then, and then then he starts saying, you know, a lot of people think I'm. Uh, I'm bought and sold for. Nobody tells me what to say. <laughs> what? Like, I, and then he, I don't know if that's accurate. And then he starts. So they started going in about how uh, Trump asked him about his family, and he's like, "This guy's running for president." And he's asking me. He's like, "Hey, sorry that you got to leave your family." And, and he, you know, Dana was great. It was just. Uh, it was hard to, t to top Hogan, but, but you know, it was it was hard to, to top Hulk Hogan. Like Hogan almost is like untoppable. Yeah. 
It was wait, almost, wait, that, wait. Dana had to go on after Hulk Hogan. Yeah, that's it was, kind of mean. That's it was Tucker, Tucker Carlson, Kid Rock, Hulk Hogan, Dana White, and then Trump. Um, ah, the, I get it. The four horsemen. I get it. Yeah, this works out perfect. It would almost be fun if like Hogan took his took Trump's mic in the middle of a speech and then cut a promo. You know, and, like it was, it was hard to top Hogan. Hogan had everybody. Yeah, and, and then Hogan what? The ear thing, you know, but like Trump has the ear shot off and Hogan was still doing that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great, man. That's that's freaking classic, classic America, baby. Okay. The end times are amongst us. So uh be well. Hey, so Meanwhile, I had a two shows last week. Um, to, actually, so after the Republican, uh, after I thought I was going to go to the RNC, I had an audition for a commercial where I'd be with Chuck Norris. I didn't get it, but it would have been me and Chuck Norris in the commercial for like, uh, which would have been awesome. And then I go do a show uh, at the Comedy and Magic Club, which went really, really well. And then the lady from the Comedy Cellar was there and she actually passed me at the Cellar, which is like a huge comedy wise. That's fucking like. Oh, like, that is the big leagues, dog. Oh, that's yeah. great, man. So, how so about wait, that? You talk about the cellar cellar in New York, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, yeah, bro, that's badass. So, and I didn't even know she was there. So that that was even better. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't even know she was in the room. Um, and then I go to the uh, the ha ha, and first there's this like this girl up there. She's hot. Talking about how her, her boyfriend's got a huge cock, and now her pussy's all stretched out. So she's doing like 10 minutes on that. And then it's a guy from Fuckboy Island. Have you, have you seen Fuckboy Island? Oh, uh, I don't I know that that's a thing. I never saw it, but it's apparently I don't know. I don't even know the premise. I know it's like what? A bunch of dudes trying to bang one whore? I'm pretty sure that's I haven't seen it either, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that I, I would assume that's the that's the premise. And then uh there's a bunch of porn stars in the crowd, right? Like and it's kind of sad because all the porn stars that I know either have like either they passed away or they found Jesus or they like moved back to Kentucky. You know, like they just so this there's a yeah. whole new young prop of porn people that I don't know any of them really, but they're all making a shit more money because the OnlyFans and they don't have to yeah. do half they're almost like like you're the old generation of porn star mayhem of like you and yeah. these guys. <laughs> and this oh, what do you mean, bro? I'm in the same boat because like uh, fighter pay has shot the fuck up. You know what I mean? Back in my day, we fought for five hundred dollars in a hot dog. No, that's you know? what I'm it's saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. And now the OnlyFans. Now there's the whole Jake Paul, ten million. Yeah. So I'm up there, and uh, and these two girls stand up, and they're they're both very attractive. Uh, but I'm like, I'm not sure these are girls, right? Uh, like ah, these, these might be uh, transgender porn stars. So they got to go to the bathroom, and I'm like, uh, where are you going? And then the one girl's like, I gotta drain my pussy. <laughs> so which drain my? I get where this is going. I get where this is going. So, so yeah. they were t they were laughing at all my trans jokes, and I, I guess I guess they were, but I, I guess. I guess what what the whole trans thing is is they haven't figured out the voice yet, um, where they can make you look like. Nah, that. nah, nah, no. My algorithm has showed me that they get voice surgery, and yeah, you're right. They haven't figured it out, but they can definitely shave a few octaves off if they. I don't know what they do. They get in there with you know what I mean, a jigsaw, and take down a little bit of your voice box. And I mean, I can't imagine how how I would say I like. Hey, it's me, man. I, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, yeah, there's something there, dog. They're doing something. They're doing but, yeah, something. It's still oh. the telltale sign. The yeah. telltale sign, isn't it? And then there was this girl there with her boyfriend who's they're both porn stars. He's from the Czech. His name is like Billy Wood or something. And uh, and the girl's name was True Kate. She's like, and she got big fake titties. And I'm like, well, how true are you if you got big fake titties? Meanwhile, she's got like 3 million followers. I'm looking at all of them. They're all... Uh, their their podcast gets like a jillion hits. Like the next day they went to a party. They go to this party mayhem and there's like snakes and animals and it's a mansion and there's a billion porn stars there and people are fucking on the roof. And, and it's just like, I, I think we missed out, Jason. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Um, yeah, there's like a whole nother set of problems that, you know, 
And uh, I mean, there's still time, bro. You, you can get a divorce. You uh, take your kid, put on the Brad Pitt plane to never talking to you again. And, you know, you can have this life too, bro. You um, can I'm go good. to the Ha Ha Cafe and just <laughs> drop your pants right on stage. I like get my blown life by Tila Tequila. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. I, that's what I was trying to illustrate. I'm, I'm glad hey, you're. Thank you, thank you very much. Right. I honestly, I probably would hate everyone at that party, you know, because it looks like they were all having fun just for the for just for the phone, you know. Like that's the thing. It's like everyone's Wait, just having for fun the what? For, for the phone for the Instagram. It's like everyone's having fun for the Instagram for the likes. Versus like parties were so much better before phones. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, back when there were just memories and you could just tell people things and, and there was no document, no d way of documenting it, life was better. I'm yeah. like, parties like, were better. Like, not, yeah, because, you know, I'm running into that same problem too right now. Like, my life right now, because I'm a public figure and, like, I am have to now monetize my existence, sort of, you know, like, I, I could go, you know, I, yeah, I coach at the gym, whatever, but there's this opportunity for me to put myself like this, record myself talking to somebody or something or talking about stuff that I know about. And so now life is work sort of yeah, thing. And, yeah, yeah. and and then what you're saying with those parts are fun is now work also. Mm -hmm. So they're never really having fun in a free, open way. Yep. Like you have to have fun in a way that you still look good and don't show your double chin or like make sure your abs are like chiseled steel, you know? Yeah, yeah. you're right, dude. That, that, that's a interesting philosophical turn. Yeah. We're, we're uh, in a different, Bill, we're in Bill a different Dawes, universe. Bill Dawes is coming from urgent care. Uh, what, what happened to you? <laughs> I rolled with a bunch of white belts. Why are you, are you really leaving? What happened? No, this is just my face. I'm sorry to admit it. No, but behind, <laughs> you, there's, behind you, there's an urgent care behind you. Uh, Oh, no, that's where my jiu-jitsu my jiu dojo is. Oh, oh, it's oh. Ne thought, it's next to one, coincidentally. Oh, I thought you were leaving, coming from urgent care. I was like, Holy I thought you were looking at my face being, Jesus Christ, what happened? I'm like, yeah, I get it. No, 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 no. So, so then I, so then, right, uh, Jason, so then I go back to my, then I have to leave for Alaska in like five hours, right? So the, uh, the show went really well. The women do their podcast. Porn stars were really nice. The, the one guy, I, I asked one of the guys, I go, are those girls or, or, or guys? I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, like after the show. And the guy was like, oh, those are the two biggest trans porn stars out there. Uh, and he's like, well, you know what? He's like, but I'd fuck them. Cause I mean, yeah, they were born men, but their pussies totally work. They have real pussies. Uh, and I'm like, uh, you know who else has real pussies? Women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the I way, do you know how they make that? Do you know how they make a fake pussy? Oh. How? They cut the oh, dick God. in the middle in half and oh. they cut both sides inside. Really? Like they, oh. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a, like it's almost like taking like a sausage, just fucking like peeling it back. Well, they cut it right down the middle and then they fold it in. From either side. God. So basically, when you're fucking, you're fucking the outside of someone's penis. Have you ever done oh, that? Wow, as as God intended. I think I did a few times. Was too drunk to remember though. <laughs> uh, so do, so it doesn't count. Doesn't count. I mean, yeah. what you're ta you're taking a hot dog and turn it inside out to make it a taco. That's interesting. <laughs> hey, listen. Like cultural appropriation. And like that's I, I look, no no judgments here. If you if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Uh, so um, so after that, I go back to my uh, place to pack. Right, I gotta leave for Alaska in five hours. My wife's sleeping, so I'm like, okay, we have a couple of these edibles, right? And it says THC. It was like only five, ten grams. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take two, relax, and then get on the plane, dude. I took two edibles. All of a sudden, <laughs> I lay down. And I'm and my heart starts beating 500 miles an hour, right? And I don't know if it's because of the TRT or the Adderall or the Celexa, whatever the fuck else I take. <laughs> Dude, I close my eyes and I'm like, I'm dying. I'm I'm fucking dying. Like like this <laughs> is it. I go and then I close my eyes and I start and I see I start floating up in the air and every image and every memory and everybody I met just starts like floating past me. And then I start seeing words of all these people and, and then colors. And I'm like, all right, well, like let's, so then I'm like, I can't go to sleep. I'm not gonna wake up. And then I start getting scared. I'm like, I'm gonna miss the Alaska 
plane. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. I can't get up. I, I, I'm going to miss it. And then, I, and then I'm like, I don't know if I'm sleeping or not. And I start having these, I, I'm like one with the earth and we're all just cells and, and, and I'm not even a person and just having all these crazy thoughts. I get up, I start stumbling around the kitchen, like, like almost like I'm like punch drunk, like my fucking, my legs are gone. Uh, somehow I call an Uber and then I, uh, I, I get on the plane, I wake up and I'm in, I'm in Alaska, but, uh, what, what, what do you think happened? Jason, what happened there? Listen, bud, I have like this experience. I would do that every weekend. What the hell are you talking about? Like I, 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 I always would push myself like the, the, the substances that you're on those, that mix is like the perfect, uh, to get like really up to the edge of death. That menu you just <laughs> described right there is the is it, you just need a little booze to throw on top of that, oh, yeah. and you're you're gonna send yourself straight to rehab, dog. Dude. Jesus also, Adam, Christ! Rule number one of, of edibles: never take them on a plane. No, I feel I, like I that's what the first thing I was told. I took them like five hours before a plane. I I was like, wow. I had like six hours to kill, so I'm like, oh, I'll take a couple of edibles. And then I'm like, and then I'm like, I I'm not gonna make this flight. I don't want to go to Alaska. Uh, well, I I can't leave. Yeah. How am I going to well, get see, there? Like, you know, buddy, listen. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what went on right now. Right? Okay. So that Adderall that gets you going up, right? Where your brain is thinking rapid fire. The marijuana it takes you to like a different dimension a little bit, where now you're thinking about all the possibilities. So those two substances together get you thinking rapid fire and thinking multiple multiple realities at the same time so you just were overwhelmed with and the then multiverse adderall. of possibility that's what i'm talking about the adderall gets you super focused thinking about stuff like way too hard and then marijuana get you thinking way too much about way too many things that's where the paranoia comes from a lot of times so you were you were having the natural reaction for all that junk you're putting in your uh, body, uh, bud. Yeah, no, you know, maybe take it. By the way, can I do time. a timeout? We have a uh, oh, sorry, wrong person. We have Dana Duke from Cobra Kai. Wants to say hi what? at some point. Oh, Dan, oh, 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 yeah, I know Dan. Are you, are you in Texas or LA? I'm in LA. He just took jujitsu with me. Uh, it wasn't uh, Ortega, his coach. He told me Ortega was his coach. Brian Ortega. Dana Duke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him last year. He said Ortega was his coach. Uh, we have a special guest coming in. Schwab oh. sucks. I, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what's going on. I think that's Brendan Schaub. Someone says, uh, Brendan, I think that's his, his nickname for Schwab, Schwab. sucks. Is a special yeah. guy. Uh, special. <laughs> wow. This is, this is <laughs> Sean McCorkle. What, what's going on? You're here with oh, oh, Round of applause oh. for Sean McCorkle. Welcome back. Oh, my God. Look at that head. Oh, Jesus. The, Mongoloid. The, Who's the, up, bro? <laughs> I am from the Mongolia area. Uh, I can trace my yeah, roots back. But no, I had, I, uh, I had one I had to tell you guys, man. This is so amazing. You know, I'm uh, undefeated on the internet. Me and Mayhem went to a tie back in the day over uh, on the underground over Kimbo. But uh, I've always said I was undefeated on the internet. But come to find out, AI is far more powerful than any of us actually dreamed because it actually clowned me the other day and hurt my feelings. Like, literally, chat GPT hurt my feelings, like, legitimately. So what happened? I thought I would tell you guys the story. Okay, so some guys talking shit on the internet, and that's what better to do with my time and go back and forth with people, right? So... I'm making fun of Bronny James saying he doesn't deserve the chance. And some guy's like, really? Well, what have you done with your life? And I was like, well, let me see. I played Division I college basketball, uh, went on to be a multimillionaire at 28, retired, uh, decided I'd fight the UFC just as a hobby, went ahead and did that, beat one of the best fighters in the world. Uh, like, just, you know, list off a whole things I've done. And I said, but the question is, what have you done? Like, back to the guy, you know? And so then the guys like other people are like, dude, that hurt my feelings. It wasn't even about me. Like people are saying stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or dude, that was yeah. the most brutal beat down ever, you know? And one of my many accomplishments I had listed on there was I was saying I was one of the only two fighters in UFC history, UFC history to ever be the co-main event in his first or second fight in the UFC. And that was uh, me and Brock Lesnar, right? Wow. So um, I was uh, my second fight in the UFC. I was co-main event at UFC 124 and he was his, co-main event his first and second fight i believe or maybe i don't know either way so i say that so later on that night i get thinking i wonder if that's still the case after all these years you know yeah if i'm still the only one that's done it so i type that in on chat gpt 
And I'm like, who are the fighters, the UFC fighters who in their first or second fight in the UFC have ever uh, been the main event or co-main event? And it said Brock Lesnar is the only one to officially do it, but Ronda Rousey technically did it because uh, even though it was her first fight in the UFC, it was also the first women's fight. They said um, Jerry Prochaska technically did it, but he was a last-minute replacement, his first fight in the UFC, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't mention me at all. Like, it doesn't say anything about me. So I say, oh, really? So what about Sean McCorkle? And as God is my witness, it says, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant famous and successful fighters. Oh, come this on. Chad, uh, Chad GPT says, I thought you were looking for famous and successful fighters. Yes, Sean McCorkle was at UFC 124, um, you know, the thing. And I was like, dude, like, what the hell? Like, I started, like, wondering if this is, like, a practical joke that, like, AI was playing on me. Like, she says, so I was like, okay. Hilarious. It gets worse. So... Um, I'm like, dude, so famous and successful. I was like, okay. And I said, Sean yeah. McCorkle, not a successful fighter. And it was like, well, it would depend on your definition of success, you know, <laughs> um, this and that. And so I said, can you name, uh, I asked Chad GBT, this is all one conversation. Can you name 30 fighters that could beat Sean McCorkle in a fight? It says, certainly, literally says, certainly. Oh, and no. names everybody who's ever fought in the UFC, <laughs> basically. You know what I mean? Or whatever. And I was like, can you name 50 fighters that could beat Sean McCork on a fight? Certainly. Names a bunch of some guys I've never even heard of. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, can you name 100 fighters? Certainly. It names 100. Some guys like it. Did named it mention Mark Brendan Hunt. Schwab? No. No, he actually wasn't on there, which was awesome. But yeah. um, it, uh, yeah, it, so it, it names off Mark Hunt and Mark Pujanowski, both of guys who I beat. It, like it could beat me. So then I like wow man so i was like okay can you name 30 fighters sean mccorkle could be and it was like um it like gave me some weird answer like that might be a little hard given my programming and i was like dude what is this this thing <laughs> set up like is am i being trolled by chat gpt and i was like you can't name 30 fighters sean mccorkle could be and it was like uh well it's i said give me like a list of the fighters it said um it said uh hypothetically sean mccorkle could beat any amateur fighter uh, it said that was like, it wouldn't give me a list of names. It said he could beat an amateur fighter or any fighters who've not won a fight in any of the professional <laughs> leagues. What's up, people? Listen, Major League Baseball is right now. And I've had some of my best memories, me and my dad going to games. I actually caught a couple balls a couple times. Uh, I had a blast. I take my daughter to the game, my wife. We have a great time. And check it out. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which means getting tickets, you can get them faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. It goes down, not up. Now, with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, okay, which is great. That way you don't get there and all of a sudden you can't see anything. And their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So, you got you to gotta check out this Game Time app. It is so easy, okay, to navigate, download. I go to all my sporting events. I went to uh, a Sparks game, the one that I took Mayhem and them to. All right, we had a great time. It was like $14 each. It was cheap, cheaper than, than movie tickets, all right? So you got to check it out. You could, you got, they got last minute deals. You could save up to 60% buying off last minutes for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. You get flash deals, all right? You get, which means that you could save even more with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. They have all in pricing and they have ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. And they have lowest price guarantee, which means, uh, you, if it's not the lowest price, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB, MLB tickets with game time. So download the game time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for $20 off first purchase. That's right. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price, guarantee, trust me, you will thank me later. And I was like, you can't name, like, you can't name, my record is online. Now, it wouldn't even give me any of the guys I've beaten as oh, people man. I could beat, you know what I mean, or whatever. So, dude, like, I was, like, screenshotting it, like, cracking up. I couldn't believe it sitting there clowning me, hurting my feelings, like, over and over again. Like, it was like Chad GPT really thinks I suck, so. Now, and then why is, well, your whole, why is your whole town mad at you? No, I mean, it just proves that the internet. 
Hey, Adam, can I just interrupt real quick? Dan, yes. the dude from Cobra Kai. Yo, oh, what's up, Dan? Hi to you. How are you, man? <laughs> We're, Adam, that's all. How are you, dude? I heard your name. I always uh, love hearing your name. You put a smile on my face. You're such a nice guy. You're such a hard worker. You're hilarious. Oh, thanks. Anyway, brother. good, good to be here. I appreciate. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got a blue belt, so I I, I coerced him into coming to jujitsu today. Yeah, he's got a blue and, belt, uh, but he could beat Sean McCorkle in a fight. Yeah, <laughs> AI said you could beat, beat Sean McCorkle. Uh, yeah, but that was Sean. Right, thanks, care, man. Appreciate yeah. it, Dan. Uh, now, Sean, why is your whole town mad at you, dude? Oh, I, okay. Okay. okay, this was like seriously. I thought they were coming like with pitchforks and stuff next, like in torches. My entire town. I, dude, I. Uh, I, I paid for my daughter's wedding, right? Like a year and a half, two years ago. And it's like $10,000 just to use a facility. Like, and I even use the facility to step on the property. No food, no drinks, nothing provided, no anything. And so um, I started looking into like how much money, you know, when my puppy mill went down a uh, hill, I uh, started thinking like how much uh, how money could I make? Because I've got 20 acres. I've got two really nice ponds. I've got like a place that people could get married a big pole barn they could have, you know, with, if I fixed it up, they could have weddings. And I started looking at these places are getting some of them 20, 30,000 a night, man, for these venues, you know, like five or six hours at a venue. And so I, uh, I call the uh, zoning commission. I'm like, if I want to turn my house into like a wedding venue, what would I need to do? And they start giving me, well, you fill out this application, fill out this, fill out this, all this different stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do all this. If there's any chance that it's going to get declined because it starts getting expensive, combining my two lots and, you know, changing zoning, you know, 300 here, 500 there. I'm in, you know, a couple thousand bucks and I don't even have the approval. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I start doing all this. I get in further and further. And then they finally they tell me everything looks good. Like we can't see there being a problem, you know. And then uh, the last day before the hearing, the fire marshal shows up and comes up with a list of things that no one's going to do. Like, absolutely nobody's going to do. Like, you need to widen your driveway to 16 feet wide. I'm like, that's as wide as the road coming here. Like, why would I Why would I widen my driveway 16 feet wide? And he's like, you would have to have a second lane of traffic in order in case there's a breakdown of one of the fire trucks if there was a fire. And I was like, well, where do you want me to put the second lane? And he goes, what do you mean? I said, like, well, it depends on where it breaks down as to where I need to drive around it. If it breaks down to the first 100 feet, I need to drive around there. If it's the second 100 feet, I need it there. So where's it going to break down? And the guy's like, I don't know. That's a weird question. I never thought about that. So on and on, I go to the hearing. They tell me they don't anticipate any issues. I get there. There's like 60 people there. There's two different or three different cases. I only have three neighbors within half a mile of me. And um, they said anyone who plans on testing, that's fine on this case, mine, like raise your hand, stand up, raise your right hand. Everybody in the courthouse stands up and raises their right hand. Like, <laughs> dude, like 50 people to oppose me. And I was like, what the hell? Hey, have I think, Jason, I think, the, I think the show Indiana versus McCorkle, the reality show. <laughs> like, oh, that'd be great. Mayhem, you kind of missed the McCorkle thing. He's always getting into fights either. And like, I thought you were crazy. Jason, this is a different kind of crazy. Like, 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 Sean's the kind of crazy where I'm, I'm criminally insane. This guy is <laughs> no, no, like, insane. like Jason, you're short term crazy. Where like you'll get someone will cut you off and you'll punch him in the in the stomach and then get sued. Okay, but McCorkle, yeah, but a lot of effort into his craziness. McCorkle, yeah. but he has a 15 year plan. Like he, I know. Gets, he gets people's. <laughs> He gets people's parents fired. He gets their kids fired. He get like they're yeah. get into colleges because of fucking things that he like. like it's a whole different type of. Uh, it's a whole different. Type oh, of I didn't know if you saw on Twitter the other day. I'm still trying to get my college coach fired for helping me cheat on a test in college oh my from God. his job. My college basketball coach. That was twenty. Well, shit, no longer that. That was thirty years ago. Um, I found out he just got a job as an athletic director someplace. So I started tweeting the newspaper of the town where he just got hired because I don't like him and said, want to know if they'd be interested in a story about how he got me a copy of my accounting final and had it put in my locker. Uh, you know, just still trying to get him fired after 30 years after he made me mad. So what was the, what was the Internet fight between you and Mayhem? I want to hear about that. Oh, that was back, uh, not that I'm anybody now, but back then when I was just an internet troll and I had only fought like one or two small amateur fights, um, I had put a, a um, 
put a thread on there that said so tired of Kimbo because I was trying to fight Kimbo back in the day before he was in Elite XC or before he fought any professional fights. I kept calling like his managers and email and said I wanted to fight him. And that's back when I had money. I said I'd bet up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars I could beat him in a fight, you know. And uh, they they wanted to do like bare knuckle stand up only. I was like, no, just to fight. Like because I knew I, at that point, you know, I was like a purple belt in jujitsu, so like I knew I could beat him, take him down, and beat him real easy. Um, as long as he didn't hit me standing up. So I was like always clowning and just trolling everybody on there. So um, Mayhem had done a video with him or whatever. And uh, I was like, I started saying stuff about that. Never dreaming Mayhem would even comment or because he was way, he was too big to be commenting on a page like that at that point on the underground. You know what I mean? I I, was funny. So I was like, I was just engaging with that. I was like, oh, this guy's pretty. Yeah. So hold you. All of a sudden, I see I, I had a thread called So Tired of Pimbo, and then all of a sudden, it was by Mayhem Miller, So Tired of McCorkle, and uh, it was all about how much I sucked or whatever, and I didn't even believe it was the actual Mayhem. I was like, dude, whatever, <laughs> like going back and forth, and then come to find out it was. I did the same thing with Josh Barnett. I didn't know. I called out Josh Barnett and said he was dodging me and he was afraid of me, and then I see a guy named Josh Barnett on the underground respond. It's the fifth post he's made total in 12 years on the site. And told me, like, he'll whip my ass anywhere, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, yeah, right, like, that's the real Josh Barnett. And then come to find out it actually was, like, the real Josh Barnett. Like, he was actually mad at me. So, it, uh, yeah, I, I used to get, uh, I don't know, I got stuff stirred up on the underground, which is how I got into the UFC to begin with. So, I was like, I was like Kimbo Slice without fighting. I just did it by trolling and got trolled my way into the UFC. <laughs> now, now, Jason, when you um, were going to fight Luke Barnett, who, by the way, Luke Barnett is now, like, Andrew Tate's main guy. Yeah, what? he's like... He's like legitimate. He's like a life coach, and him and Andrew Tate are like best friends. Because Andrew Tate beat him in a kickboxing fight. You know Andrew Tate, the the yeah, you know, yeah. So he beat the him. Sex in- trafficker, of course. Like years ago, <laughs> years ago, Andrew Tate. <laughs> years ago, Tate beat Bar- Luke Barnott in like a kickboxing match, and now they're like best friends. And Luke is like making all these like th- co- things of like how to be like a, like a you know how to up your game as a man and this and that. And he's I guess he's pretty successful at it. But I know Mayhem was supposed to fight Luke, but then you kept saying you're fighting Josh Barnett instead of Luke Barnett. Uh, did did Josh <laughs> did Josh ever comment on that? I had just got I had just got into the weed business and that shit was hitting different. You know? <laughs> <laughs> did Josh ever say I'm not really fighting you, or was he laughing about it? I don't know. I never even talked to Josh about that. I think at that phase of my life. Because of the business that I was in, I was uh, absolutely terrifying to everybody in the entire world. Like, mixed martial arts world was like, yo, we lost them to the criminal world. Yeah, my wife <laughs> told me. My wife goes, I like Jason a lot. I just don't want him to know where we live. Uh, <laughs> that's why I said I to come crash into your house. No, but no, seriously, uh, it's so funny though because I had four coaches, I had four assistant coaches uh, on my middle school wrestling team, and even as fucked up as Jason was, he was still my number one coach. That's how fucked up the other coaches were. Most <laughs> one, every other one of them were like gay porn stars, and like I don't know the fucking. I don't know what. <laughs> You're not kidding. They really were. Uh, I, I I would say, Bill. I hate to say it. I, I love you, but out of out of, out of you three, if I had like to get rid of a dead body, uh, McCorkle and Mayhem would be the first two guys. Uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> what Adam, the same applies. I love you too. Be which one of us two would have killed the dead body is what I want to know, man. If you had to get rid of it, it's gonna be me or Mayhem that would have killed him. So. I am not cutting this into six again. <laughs> okay, let's play fuck Mary Kill. No, that's to marry Adam. So, <laughs> by the way, so anyway, so then, right? All right, the story. So then I get on the cruise ship and all of a sudden Trump got shot, right? Like, which was fucking insane, right? Like, I'm in Alaska, I turn on TV and I'm like, because I'm still coming off the edibles. And I'm like, am, is this really, <laughs> did this really, did this really happen? Or am I in some bizarro world, right? So, uh, and then I got to do shows that night, two shows. And they were like, hey, no mentioning Trump getting shot, which. I, oh, God. So I'm like, OK, I get it. I get it. And they're like, actually, don't mention any politics. Right. And I'm like, OK, like, <laughs> come on, because like a lot of the jokes I do on the on the things I, I'm, I'm doing for Gutfeld, I'm doing Gutfeld Tuesday. Yeah, you have Gutfeld fans there to see you, I'm sure. It's a lot of well, it's a lot of fan. It's a, a lot of the same fan base. It's 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 middle America. It's middle America. 
and that's who's gonna and that's where i'm like so i just did the jokes anyway and but then the guy bringing me up for some reason it was like the guy looked like weird al yankovic like exactly like a young weird al and he was like he would open up every show going hey just so you guys know i'm a wizard and put on a wizard hat and be like why don't you guys see my magic wand and pull it out of his pants and then the next day he was a pirate so he and he would do like seven minutes of like bad pirate jokes from the internet of like like what's a why does a pirate need a pee otherwise you would be irate like pirate like, like it was just it was fun. <laughs> that's not a bad joke okay come on yeah, I, i'm on a cruise ship going all around the world i just come up with a few pirate puns <laughs> you can host, but he works there. He 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 he's not, he's not the comic. He he works for the the, the company, and then he, like he's gonna be part of the fun squad next week, and uh, then he's gonna be part of something else. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. I hope he's part of anything but the stand up comedy from what you showed me, because that was brutal. What you sent me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell if he was trying to not be funny to be funny. You know how some people like when uh, when Norm Macdonald did the roast and intentionally was not funny. I thought that's what he was going for. Like I was like, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I thought Brendan Schaub was doing too his whole career. Uh, and I realized he was actually being serious. Like he was. It really to was kind of like a Steve Martin ish. Like you know, how Steve Martin was like so funny because he was like the anti comic. He's like, I'm gonna yeah. tell, but the jokes were so ridiculous that they were still funny. And then you were laughing <laughs> at the fact that it that they was like it kind of had that, but it, he but he wasn't doing it to be like Steve Martin. He was just those were his real jokes. Um, uh, but we didn't talk to you, Sean. What did you think about uh, Trump being shot and uh, how he reacted to everything? I couldn't believe it took that long, man. Like I've been saying for years that I I can't believe they even let him live. Like that's a, like I figured he'd be on a slow ride in a convertible through a Dallas Plaza way before now. You know what I mean? Like it's uh I don't think for a second somebody was in on it. I don't know if it's the Secret Service or whatever, but I don't believe for a second that the the official story is what we're told, man. Like it's either that or they got the worst Secret Service that ever lived, man. I'll tell you what, like it's uh that that is uh I was not surprised at all. But I am surprised by the balls that whoever set it up, like whoever's in charge, like I, I used to think I knew who really ran the world. Like I thought it was the international bankers. Uh, then I thought it was the Illuminati. Then I thought it was the Jews. Uh, then I thought it was the, <laughs> well, I guess all three same of those thing. would have been the one and the same. Yeah, all three. Um, no, no the, uh, the I really thought like it, then it's George Soros, but I don't know who's in charge. Like somebody has to be in charge, but I don't know who it is now, man. Like well, I the really kid didn't know. make his rifle. Right, the kid didn't make his rifle team in high school. First of all, they didn't even know they had a rifle team in high school. Like right. what was a rifle team, but but that he didn't make. <laughs> Like he didn't make the rifle team, so all of a sudden he's fucking commando up there. Uh, and 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 by the way, a lot of people were like the female secret service agents. It's not looking good for like they were not represented <laughs> well because one of them just ducked and like took cover, right. and the other one was like two feet shorter than Trump. Look, there are women that could have done that job, like Gabby Garcia, or like or like uh, there are females out there that could do that job. Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. She, she was two open. feet shorter, but she was three feet wider. So maybe she had his peripherals or something. Like, I don't know if he had anything that. Maybe she was just protecting his dick. Maybe that was yeah. the, the protocol. Someone's oh got to protect the president's oh dick. Oh my God. I mean, it, uh, I don't know what they thought. Man. I don't know what they thought was going to happen if they succeeded, but I'll tell you what, I assume the country would be in flames right now. It's not, man. Like, I can't. If, if they kill Trump, I just don't think. I don't know. I don't know. I just not don't only think that, but like, if, if, if like, Trump hadn't turned his head, he would his head would have exploded on television yeah I oh mean, my god like can you imagine like like someone's the president's head imagine the damage that's gonna do to children like anyone oh, yeah television you're watching like you're seven years old you're six and you see someone's head explode on tv uh, like nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> i watched like a bunch of astronauts explode into outer space and die and i, I you know yeah, Wait, you really saw that? There's video of that. <laughs> I was playing on the slide seven minutes later, dude. I I saw it live in school. They're like, "Hey, we're." Oh. I was the fourth grade. They're like, "Hey, they're, we're going to watch the Challenger. We're going up, and it started glowing really bright." And I was like, "I don't oh, think no. that's supposed to happen." Like when I was eight years old watching, I was like, "I don't think that's the way that's supposed to look." Like, oh no. man, yeah, but that's still that was still horrible. You're right, man. That was an awful thing. But they didn't have yeah. like, but now with the slow motion and there was no internet back then. Like, like, could you, like, oh my God, that, like that would have been, oh, man, he, uh, 
he, Listen, I got a good opportunity to argue with McCorkle right now, okay? He's got all yeah. these theories, all right? Fucking dude, how about it was just the same thing that happens every week in America. Some lonely loser can get an access to his family gun and crawl up into a school or on top of a, 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 a thatched hut full of snipers and shoot everybody. We live in America, okay? Which means freedom, which means the Second Amendment, which means anybody can pick up a rifle and do what they want. And sometimes it just takes one crazy dude, not the Illuminati, not the Jewish bankers, not the goddamn CIA. It's just one dude with a dream to shoot a president. <laughs> and he makes that dream happen, baby. Yeah, but God, God bless America. God yeah, bless I think America. Sean, I, I think Sean's Sean. coming across as inspirational. I don't know why. I feel, yeah, it does. I feel very inspired after you're amazing to say that. Like, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that reflect Jason, the of the podcast. Jason, I think, I think Sean's more saying, like, how do they miss it? Like, how do they let him up there for an hour? Like, oh. yeah, I mean, they got videos of the guy you know 26 what? minutes before, like, hey, there's a guy with a gun up here. And everybody's just like, oh, I don't know, man. That's weird. This is America. There's people with guns everywhere. That's what everyone thought. They're just like, nah, nah yeah, another guy with a gun. Like, look, I, I, I think that, you know, it's Occam's razor, right? You don't have to, like, attribute malice where stupidity will do. Like, yes, I agree. Uh, you know, I listen as as a criminal for many years. I watched the incompetence of. <laughs> okay? I wa I watched uh, me get away with stuff I should have definitely not got away with, and me get busted for shit that I shouldn't have got busted for. All because it's the human element. Yeah, cops are great and whatnot, but like they're human beings and they make mistakes, and especially in, in an environment of a lot of cops. No one would ever think that somebody would be so bold as to crawl their ass up on a sloped metal roof that they didn't even want to climb up on, okay, to, like, go and take the chance of certain death because there's so many cops around to go and take a shot at Trump. Now, that being said, every once in a while, you get one crazy dude, you know, and since we have... Free yeah, but, but but do you think but do you think somebody trained the kid or paid the kid off to do it? Yeah, yeah, motherfucker. Call of Duty, uh, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. No, That's dude, true. there is something to be said for I. Yeah. Uh, good point. Uh, the the stuff they're letting little kids play video games anymore, man. I'll tell you what, I stopped playing Grand Theft Auto. It, it came out when I was like in my twenties, but uh, I think anyway. But I was playing it, and I was driving down the road one day, and for a minute, I felt like I was in Grand Theft Auto. Like, when I hit a bump, it kind of felt like yeah, I could just hit a couple cars and keep going because I'd been playing it too much. And I thought for a second, like, dude, that's kind of, I wonder if it's if it's rewiring my brain at 22 years old. What's it doing to a little kid, you know? Well, there's a book called Generation Kill that had this series, and Generation Kill is about this generation of kids who grew up on video games. And actually, the accuracy of kill shots at World War II versus Iraq was like 20% to like 80%. Yeah, but the, yeah. the kill ratio is so much better after video games. It's true. But, uh, Bill, Bill, do you think somebody might have trained this kid? Like somebody paid the kid off, or? Well, they they haven't unlocked his phone somehow, right? So we have no none of his phone phones. records. Apparently, he had, two, he, he had two phones, and we have no record of anything happening on those phones. That's a little fishy to me. No, what does Sean think? They haven't brought it out. It's going to get brought out, and it's probably pretty bad. Like that's probably like you know everybody's like I like how everyone's saying they they like there's some like criminal mastermind behind this whole deal when in reality it just takes one crazy dude that's how thing, the, the, yeah i i'm i'm kind of with you jason but at the same time and also i'm like well let's say they they gave him a hundred grand he's fucking dead like he's not gonna how is he gonna spend any of the money so what could they have done to entice this kid oh it, but it's that's not like uh the middle east where they take care of your whole family uh or, or like hey if you're a suicide bomber the you know your whole no, family. You're missing the point, bro. Like the whole thing is for a, a kid like this, right? Yeah, I can totally, I, you know, the, one of my uh, worst things that I can do is sympathize with the devil. Okay. Now everyone want to call this kid evil or whatnot, but in a way America ramps you up to this type of behavior because if you're patriotic, you do the things that uh, no one else will do. Right. So, this kid had been indoctrinated with that mindset, okay? Now, maybe he didn't make it to the Army, 
his too nearsighted from what I can see. All right. Uh, and maybe he couldn't hit the damn target enough to make the rifle team, which you just said. Okay. Matt, maybe he looked at his life as a big waste, a big total waste. And I've met these school shooter types in my travels. All right. This guy, <laughs> feels like his life, it feels like his life is totally wasted. But guess what would, would make his not life not wasted? If he turned the tide of American history by taking out the biggest guy in the world, that's what the motivation was. But and he, you but know, he knows he's going to get shot, though, right? Yeah. I mean, don't you know he's, he knows he's going to get killed? He thinks he's not going to yes. get killed? Yes, yes. But listen, what, what's the point of his life anyway? He ain't getting no pussy. He ain't going to make no money. He ain't going to do nothing. Hey, no amount of Andrew Tate courses would have made that guy get some vagina. Okay, this guy was assed out anyway, in cell to the max. There's no everybody made fun of him all the way through high school. He thought maybe, oh fuck, maybe I can go to the army. Nah, they don't want him. You can't see shit. Your feet are flat. Get out of here, kid. Oh, maybe I can be a cop. Ah, he fails the test. He can't even drive. Ah, you know what? Uh, let me get a ladder. And I got my daddy's AR, and I'm gonna be somebody. And he wasn't. Uh, he's like a millimeter off. Uh, Donald Trump, just Neo in the Matrix, baby. Just yeah. can't stop him. Whoa! I just trip his ear, but he's all right. He's fist bumping, baby. He's when he's Sean, winning the think? election. Yeah. Sean, Sean, uh, I think. I mean, there are, are obviously things that are coincidence, like uh, like Alex Jones. It cracked me up when Alex Jones thought that they staged the Sandy Hook thing because I'm like. If you think that the government, if if they were going to do that, that they care about those kids' lives enough to stage it, they would just shoot the kids. You know what I mean? Like, they don't need to stage something. But it's just awfully convenient, man. Too many things. There's so many people against Trump. I mean, it could be any number of things, but I, I, I am shocked that it took this long, whether it be his political opponents. Like, I don't believe for a second that JFK was Lee Harvey Oswald. Like, I don't think anybody at this point believes that. I don't think Martin Luther King, I, do. I don't even know who they said killed him. Like, I think obviously there was a political motivation there, but um, same with RFK, uh, his dad or whatever. But uh, Jason is right in saying that uh, there's a lot of stupidity out there, man. I've like, I, I was reading one day crime statistics of how few murders get solved. You watch TV, you would think that they catch 99% of the people. That's something like 75% of murders. I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass. But 75% of murders go unsolved. And I'm like, dude, how how does that even happen? Like, how other than really horrible police work, you know, like, it's just like, uh, it's just crazy. Uh, but I mean, I think if not, if it wasn't them, they, whoever they are, uh, they definitely don't want Trump to be president from bringing bullshit charges they would never bring against anybody else to whatever number of things they're doing. But I think eventually, I don't think it's over. I think... They will kill him eventually. I think someone's going to kill him eventually. One way or another. Well, the whole, he was in a BlackRock commercial, which I mean, that's on. That's, 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 that's true. Weird. Was that fake? He always, well, he yeah, really was BlackRock thing. He was in the commercial, but I, I haven't. Well, another thing, like, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, this, I bet he chopped that Walmart too. It's like, yeah, <laughs> well, Walmart owns everything. BlackRock owns everything. It's like, I, of course, it's you know. It's the I, like, I like the I like how the um it, it everything's connected. I like I like I want to get one of those pegboards and just like pin you know what ah. I mean string to everything like <laughs> Pepe Sylvia Pepe Sylvia you know I, I'm totally into it. All right, well back to fighting. Um, so wait, this, wait, we didn't talk about fighting one fucking time. Fight, 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 is fighting Mike Perry tomorrow. It's nice. going to be at, at 200 pounds, um, which Mike Perry fought at 170. Uh, that, but at the same time, he's a he's a pretty good boxer. He's a much better at bare knuckle boxing. And, his, and he's got a head that like, you can't seem to hurt this guy. You can't hurt him with anything. You can't hurt him with, 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 with bare knuckle gloves. And he's never, the only time he's ever really been hurt is with a, a kick to the head. Uh, Unfortunately, I still think Jake Paul wins his fight. Uh, McCorkle? Uh, I think, yeah, he's so much bigger than him. Um, probably technically a better boxer. I will. It will be nice to know for once that the fight's not set up because I don't think Mike Perry is taking $100 million to take a set-up fight. Like, I just don't Correct. think he uh, – I don't think he would do it. So it's going to be real either way. There's not going to be any, you know, fishy stuff there uh, as far as winning or losing. But uh, my favorite Mike Perry story that I've told 100 times on here, but I got to tell it again in case Mayhem didn't hear it. 
the first uh, the first and only night I ever met uh, Mike Perry Mayhem. The uh, I was at this fight in Pensacola, Florida. Guy Dean Tool, who's actually Masvidal's partner now, and a lot of his stuff that he does, like his he's his uh, promotional partner. Um, Dean tells me, well, I guess I shouldn't have said it was Dean that told me this, but oh well. Dean tells me, dude, you got to meet this dude, Mike Perry. I was like, it, it, like, why? What's up? He goes, I like, I was like, is he like the future MMA? He goes, I don't know, dude, but he believes it. And I was like, what do you mean? He believes it. He goes, dude, he believes it. And I didn't know what that meant. I was like, what was he like? What, believes it. And he goes, just wait till you meet him. So I go over there. And he's like, hey, this is Sean McCork. He goes, yeah, I know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like this and that or whatever. And he's like, giving me like, you know, like a hug or whatever, like high five, whatever. Talk to him. He's man, I'm telling you right now, I'll whoop Riley or Robbie Lawler's ass. You know what I'm saying? He's dropping the end bomb. He's like all this <laughs> on and on, like everything. And I was like, damn, after five minutes of talking to him, I was like, this dude believes it. He does believe it. I'll tell like, you he, what, he though. He, he's actually, um, they mentioned, someone else mentioned, uh, says the N-word. A white guy was saying the N-word. And they asked Mike Perry, like, hey, you know, you said it before. What's your thoughts on it? And he goes, well, listen, man. He goes, if you know it hurts people's feelings and, and, and like, you know, it's not going to. He's like, just take it out of your vocabulary. Like, he seems to be maturing. Uh, right. So, yeah. Uh, you know, also, I told you. <laughs> I told you my son is doing his first my son is doing his first open mic, right, Adam? I told you that. Yeah. And they told him no F word and no N word. Um, and I told him you better verify what they mean on that. And um, so he said, okay. And um, so he sends to them, what do you mean? Uh, like when you say no N word, which one do you mean? Um, <laughs> like to be funny. And uh, the lady actually thought it was really funny. When I saw it, I was like, holy shit, that may have been a mistake. Like I thought that was like, cause he, you know, like instead of trying to verify, so you better verify meaning like which F word they mean, you know, oh, uh, the, the no using. And I uh, said, you better verify, which one, better verify which one. And he goes, okay, let me check. And he sent it and shows it to him. He said, just to clarify, which N word do you not want me to say? And uh, Dude, the, I had uh, a show yeah, Tuesday night, I had, I had a show Tuesday night and at the dime and now they're giving out food. And it's like nice like beautiful black woman, a little bigger, is giving people food, right? So like 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 samples. So then I go on stage and another girl who who looked similar sits down. I go, oh, give it up for the the girl. Give it every the, the uh, chef. <laughs> give it everyone this delicious food. And she's like, uh, that's not me. She's like, that's so racist. What I'm the help? And I'm like, it's like I'm like, no, sorry. Uh, and then and then and then my, my friend Mike estimate who's black came look i'm i'm adam's uh i'm adam's black up uh, I, i'm i'm going to i'm going to speak for him he's not racist he's like, i thought you were going to say you called her the n word i was like damn that's no <laughs> I, I was not going to but but uh um also on this card who i felt so bad uriah hall when like uriah hall i was next to uriah hall one of the award shows and it was the same year that uh, israel Adesanya won like 30 awards and everyone kept going up to Uriah Hall and saying, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've, and I was next to him. And he's like, why do people keep congratulating me? And I was like, man, I, I think they think that you're Israel. And th the look of sadness that came over his face. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. But, but Uriah Hall <laughs> is boxing Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. tomorrow on this card. Really? Yeah. So is, he out of the, is he out of MMA, Uriah Hall? Uh, no, he's still doing well. He's out of UFC, but he's boxing Chavez Jr., who I think ha really struggled with crack a lot recently. I think he was in and out of rehab for allegedly <laughs> for crack just recently. <laughs> or did he like indulge in it? Oh man, I think so. Yeah, I think Uriah Hall's got a shot. I mean, Anderson Silva beat uh Chavez Jr., but Chavez Jr. is still a world class boxer who went 12 rounds with uh, well, uh Canelo. Um, mayhem. Who wins this fight? Yeah, I think you're right. Hall got it. It might, you know. I I think so. You're right about the world class boxer stuff, but like, I, how many rounds is it? I think you're right. Hall can like jab him and off to the side. I, I I'm going Hall with that one. I mean, and look, you didn't even ask me who I thought with Jake. Oh, Paul. who wins Jake Paul fight? Who wins? I can't think sorry. that might change my mind. Even though Mike Perry is like smaller, I I don't know, bro. He's just giving me confidence vibes, like. Some BDE, bro. He just like doesn't give a shit. He ain't scared of Jake Paul at all. He's not feeling I don't know. And like McCorkle said, the guy never got knocked out really, except from a head kick. So yeah. how how big are the gloves for this fight? Are they like 15 ounces? Uh, are they pillows? What are they? I think they said 12. 12. 12. Yeah. 12? Oh, that makes me not like it then. 
Damn, now I'm back to Jake Paul again. My but bad. He, but he beat. But he did beat um, MVP in a boxing match. Uh, it was bare knuckle boxing, but he beat him in bare. I mean, dude, after what he did to Luke Rockhold, that you know Rockhold's a big dude, man. And Mike Perry beat him. That shocked the hell out of me, man. When he knocked his teeth, literally knocked his teeth out. I couldn't believe. It. I never dreamed he'd be able to beat Luke Rockhold. Uh, uh, bare knuckle or otherwise, you know. By the way, uh, Mayhem, you were brought up. Uh, Rampage talked about you. Now you left. You and Rampage were friends, but you went and trained Dan Henderson. Uh, well, yeah, you know what? He th I I heard that thing. He told the story all messed up. What happened was that I uh, was trained. I trained with Rampage for years. Then I left. I went to Vegas. I went to um, Temecula. I trained with Dan Henderson. Then. Uh, later on, Rampage um, hired me back for a training camp. I went to training camp with Rampage, and then then he got signed to fight Dan Henderson. So suddenly, you know what I mean? I was in this weird position where I'm in training camp with both guys, pretty much. I like left Dan Henderson's camp to go train with Rampage's camp. So and and Rampage was getting to see like all the moves that we were doing at Team Quest. And I'm, you know, it's like a strange, that's just like the small world aspect of mixed martial arts, especially back then. Now, nowadays, there's not, there's a lot more bigger camps, you know, like, like high level camps. But back then there was like, in California, there was like three, you know, yeah, yeah. if you train with the best yeah. guy, you had three choices. And, you know, I was training at two of them. Right, right, right. I mean, he, he didn't seem, he didn't seem mad at you though for that. He didn't seem like he was mad. Oh, that's the funny part, too, is that the story got convoluted and Rampage got mad at me later because I was I trained with Matt Linland for one of his fights and he got pissed that I was at Linland's camp. And I'm like, yo, bro, like, you know, no, then he, he got really <laughs> mad at you when helicopters were after you and you asked to hide in his hot tub, right? <laughs> no, I didn't ask. I just hid in his hot tub. Right? <laughs> Jumped in the hot tub and that's how it is. So wait, so helicopters are looking for you and you're like, I'm going to go to Rampage's hot tub? Well, listen, the helicopters are already looking for me when I made the decision that I'm going to hide in Rampage's hot tub. You know, <laughs> did, did, Rampage, did Rampage go to the backyard and say, get out of my hot tub? No, no, no. He actually like to talk to the cops while I was like in the hot tub and I told the cops he don't know where I am. But I didn't know if he was saying that because he actually didn't know where I was or <laughs> Oh, was he harboring uh, <laughs> a fugitive of justice? So either way, he I love wants it. to go check Dan Henderson's hot tub. He's probably over there. Listen, <laughs> bud, they had the they had the fucking dogs out, dude. So I could have got really mauled by the police dogs. So I'm glad that I hit in that hot tub. I remember I'll when remember when Rampage like did a hit and run, but he had a huge truck that said Rampage on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> had a, literally had a fucking his face on the side. Yeah, I, I got enough. That up to be honest, and it wasn't even like one of a truck. It was one of those like super big, you know, those huge tires. Almost looked like one of those like monster trucks. It was <laughs> yeah, like, literally a monster truck. Yeah. yeah, that was one time I went through one of those red light cameras, and I knew I was going to run the light. So I took a piece of paper from the side, I covered my face, and it was my headshot with my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Awesome. True story. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Last week was a pretty boring fight card. The uh, the there was a Drew Dober fight that was really good. Uh, did you yeah. see the Tracy? Do you guys watch Tracy Cortez versus Rose Namajunas? Yeah, I, mean, I, watched, I watched the weigh in and I watched her Instagram for a little bit too long. Once I found out who she was, <laughs> well, Rose uh, <laughs> Rose threw a punch and Tracy's uh, fake eyelash, eyelash. went off. So oh. she knocked. She, she knocked. I've had that happen before. Yeah, sexual injury where like. Uh, headbutt the girl's eyelash off and is just flapping in the wind. That's Wait, the you've worst. done that? Yeah, you know, and I remember in Japan that this this chick was just so hot, and I was like, oh my god! And we got back to, to the hotel room and we we're getting at it, and then all of a sudden, I don't know how, during the hustle and the tussle, her one of her eyelash was like halfway off, and it was like swinging. It was super <laughs> hard to keep focus, bro. I, I I don't know how I did it. It was my personal Vietnam. Well, Mayhem looked at the Miller and saw a shooter on a sloped roof. It was like, wait a minute, somebody just shoot her eyelash off? Like, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Was that My a fight? real eyelash or a fake eyelash? Was she, does she fight with fake eyelashes? Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. My personal Vietnam was 
I met some girl in Missouri, uh, like on Tinder. I go back to her place and there's like a remote on her thing. And I'm like, well, oh, is this for the TV? And she's like, no, I have a prolapsed rectum. She's like, my asshole fell out. And she had a remote control that made her asshole tighter. Right, what? right. I swear. <laughs> I swear. Like, I was like, and uh, so. Dude, what did you do? Pick it up and push fast forward real quick? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I actually, I was kind of being respectful. But I was, eject, 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 eject. <laughs> you know how you get a prolapse rectum, right? There's only one way to get a prolapse rectum. She said it was from oh. gymnastics. Uh, I want to know how you get a, a remote for yeah, a prolapse wait, rectum. Wait, 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 know. Where do you order that at? Wait, gymnastics? Who's her coach? Larry Nasser? <laughs> <laughs> that was a dark joke. Sorry. Hey, what's the, what's the joke. only way, Bill? <laughs> What's the only way from just it? hardcore butt sex? Oh, really? I so I don't know. Her asshole fell out, and she had, and I was like, "Is the garage door gonna open too?" Like I was making stupid jokes, but I, I it was late at night, and I was like, "But that that's a, that's a true story." The girl had a had a had a remote. Did you, have, did you have sex with her, or did you like yeah. not? Yes, I had I had sex with her, of course. Not yet. Was the soldier. remote involved at any point during no. that? Hey, no, the remote. Remote <laughs> all of her back. <laughs> No, no. Uh, all right. So you uh, use the remote to put up your ad. And <laughs> her and Adam got their they got the remotes mixed up, came home and was like, oh my God, I think we actually switched remotes. <laughs> but I've Googled prolapse rectum remote control, like to find out like what she had. I can't find it. I don't know. I, it must have been like a <laughs> Was it a universal remote? Can you tighten an asshole from anywhere? <laughs> what are we saying? <laughs> Connected to the network. He's got like the Tesla app on his phone. Right? <laughs> Post for butt at any time. He was searching for your neighbor's prolapse rectum. <laughs> like, oh, wait, the bro, you can't, like, well. can't, can't just gloss over this. I, I can't get out of my head now. Okay. Did you inspect the anus at any time? Did no, it, it was like I was leaving it like the next morning. It was like already one o'clock, and like, and I was like, she said she had a pro relaxed rectum, and that's for the remote control. She said her, her asshole fell out from a sports injury. I think I think it was gymnastics. Uh, I don't know. I guess she's been, <laughs> and and then uh, and then and we fucked it, and I, I I left, but I was still confused. Like like the next no, but day. You did back and like spread the cheeks and look down the fucking brown no, i didn't i know i didn't i i should have you would have done that right i mean obviously <laughs> i've already thought this thing through four ways of tuesday yeah I, I interviewed her about it in every different way you know i, I don't know how you just uh, you get so yeah. close to the glory you know you get so close to the mountaintop adam and you just yeah. turn Right before Adam, you hit you probably fucked the shit out of her. My guess would be you literally fucked the shit out of her. That, that, Jason, that you're 100 percent right about. So that that's true. That's kind of a metaphor for my life. Uh, is that fucking keep prolapse. Digging, keep digging, bro. You're gonna find gold. And that there <laughs> prolapse ain't as hill, dude. I can't help but keep talking about right now. I hope my mom doesn't watch this podcast. <laughs> uh, I think your mom's seen worse, Jason. Um, yeah. So uh, what? <laughs> Uh, Sean, what would you have done if the girl had a prolapse anus? Yeah, Lee, dude, I don't even know. I, I definitely don't even want to Google it because the way you're describing it sounds pretty disturbing. But uh, yeah, I don't even know what. So I'm yeah, her to asshole is too loose. Like, like, like I guess it tightens her asshole. It's too loose. Otherwise, I guess she's like. She, is there a cord going to her butthole though, or is that like it's a wireless? No, like, wasn't. No, it wasn't it attached to a wire. It's a Bluetooth butthole. No, it was. It was a Bluetooth. <laughs> It was battery Bluetooth. It, it wouldn't. It didn't have a wire or anything. It was a, a regular remote. It went to her, from to, to her anus. You saw the remote? Yeah, yeah. I saw the remote. I was like, "What is this remote for?" Story, Bill. Get it together, bro. Yeah, she told it me was on the nightstand conveniently. Yeah, Adam, she told you that because she wanted you to use it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if she didn't say that makes my butthole tighter. Maybe you should <laughs> check it yeah. out. Like I get that was her move. You know. Do you feel this, Adam? Do you feel it? <laughs> Ow! Oh! <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this week we have Amanda Lemos <laughs> versus Verna Jandaroba is on the card. Cody Durden, the guy we had on the show recently that I talked about his hot wife. Remember I talked about his hot wife? Yeah. He's, he's fighting Bruno Silva. This card's Cody Gibson, who's a school teacher. Uh, we've had him on the show too. He's fighting Brian Kelleher. Uh, 
And then Muhammad Usman, who's uh, Kamaru Usman's brother, is fighting Thomas Peterson. He should win this fight. Um, Wait, is this the boxing match or is this the UFC? UFC. Oh, I didn't even know they had a, a fight this weekend. Yeah, it's it's not the greatest card, if I'm being totally honest. Um, is it pay-per-view? No, 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 no. The next week, the week after, the next week is the big one. That's the pay-per-view. Um, this you is guys, there was a time where we get super chubbed up for the UFC card because there wasn't one every weekend and it wasn't so overly saturated. And it would be like, oh, my God. You BJ Penn is gonna fight, and we would be so excited. You know, man, I kind of miss those days because yeah. it's like, and don't get me wrong, I love doing MMA roasting, but man, how am I supposed to keep up with every every freaking? Oh my god, bro! And to be a UFC fan, it costs like nine hundred dollars a month if you really yeah. do it the yeah. true correct way and uh, fill Dana's coffers with every last dollar. You know. No, the a, next the next week, the next week is Bilal Muhammad, Leon Edwards, Curtis versus Tom Aspinall, Bobby Green you know, versus Bobby Green versus Patty Pimlet. Up for Bilal Muhammad? I am. I like Bilal Muhammad, and then Me Patty too. Pimlet, Bobby Green. That that's Bobby Green. no, please, King Green. King Green. Uh, that's the that's the big card. Uh, so we'll talk about that next week. Uh, what do you have coming up, McCorkle? Uh, nothing. I had something really funny to tell you, and I completely lost my train of thought, but it was right before you said that about the, uh, cards being watered down. So I guess if I think of the next 30 seconds, I'll tell you otherwise nothing. Uh, um, can, can people say, do you still, are you still breeding dogs? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, barely. So yeah, it's, uh, that market has collapsed, man. The, uh, whole, actually the, I don't know if you guys, I used to be raked back in the day and in 2008, everyone around me went broke and I was like, dude, why is everyone going bankrupt? It's so weird. And then I was like bankrupt a year later because it was like the trickle up effect, I guess, where like everything I was involved in, all the businesses failed because everyone ran out of money. And I see the exact same thing happening now. Everyone I know is going bankrupt. So I'm wondering how long it is before I do, you know, like it's because uh, I'm like fine financially right now. But everyone I know is struggling bad, man. Like, I mean, bad. And it's uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, man. But I know it's uh, it's not going to be good coming here shortly. Oh, you can so only Jason, uh, so Jason, Sean spent twenty thousand dollars. To breed dogs, right? And, well, and I don't know if that's what I would call it. And <laughs> pit bulls, and of course, the main one was gay, so right. it, only, it only wanted to hump the men. And yeah, no, I had uh, yeah, no, that's a really, really long story short. I wanted to get a couple pit bulls because I had to almost shoot a meth head out here. Um, in my uh, they hired me to shoot a meth head out here, whoever they are, right? Um, you know, like the thing earlier about Trump. I don't know. So, no, I almost shot a meth head trying to break in my property out here. So I'm going to get a couple of good guard dogs. And then I went to buy from this breeder. And she told me number one pick from her litter was 15 to 18. And I thought she meant 100. So I say I'll take the first two picks. And as we're talking, and she tells me, okay, well, that'll be 33000 You know, and I was like, wait, you, you meant $18,000 for a dog? Long story short, I found out they sell these certain kind of pit bulls called American Bullies. That's yeah. American Bullies for ten to $20,000 a piece. And so I thought, well, if I want to get a couple of dogs anyway, I might as well get ones I can breed and then sell their puppies for 20000 a piece, right? Like, it makes sense. Do a litter a year. So uh, I do the first litter. I buy these dogs. First litter, I make about 5000 a pup. So I'm like, you know, I don't want to do this for a living, but, you know, once a year, I'll do it. Then the next one, they were about 3000 Then the next one, about 2000 Then the next litter, this is over a period of four years, I was basically giving them away this last litter because no one has any money anymore. And so I'm like, well, okay, I'm only in like a hundred grand on this at this point. You know what I mean? So I always, I'm perfect at getting in right at the peak of everything, man. Like a, right when when Bitcoin hits the absolute peak, that's when I'll buy in. Like it, I'm, I'm perfect. My timing is perfect. So um, yeah. everything I do falls apart. If you want, like, it, do, it doesn't matter what it is. If you want it to fail, let me get in on it, and it'll start going to hell, that industry immediately. So. Buy high, sell low. I got it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, Jason, what do you got coming up? Uh, bro, listen, I'm going to go on a real podcast called oh. Matan. I don't know if you've heard of it, <laughs> but uh, he's uh, the number one Jewish podcaster in the United States of America. So I'm going to be on that pretty soon. Um I don't know. I, I'm doing um, a lot of things. Uh, I got some stuff coming up, uh, like car jitsu, maybe. Uh, nice. I'm gonna do some some with those guys, maybe. I'm gonna do something with um, 
there's a Dan Henderson uh, fight show, the uh, amateur fight league. I'm going to get some guys in there. By the way, Tony's not yeah. kidding. We, we had the guy on, the, on our show. They have yeah. jujitsu in cars. Buddy. They actually fight in cars? cars? Yeah, they, they, yeah they, they, they can strangle each other with like the uh, with the, uh, seat the seat belt. belt. Yeah. That's awesome. They actually asked me to be on. <laughs> uh, they got a special guest, Jerry Seinfeld. And it's uh, comedians in cars with coffee getting choked. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. And, then, uh, and then, Bill, what do you got coming up? Just, uh, you know, Laugh Factory every Wednesday, next Thursday, improv, and just shows around LA. That's pretty much it. Nice. Uh, Tuesday, I'll be on Gutfeld, Fox News. McKee, check it yeah. out. Yeah, baby. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, go to adamhuntercomedy.com. My whole schedule, uh, and then uh, I'm, I think I'm performing at Dan Henderson's Pig Roast. Um, no. he could really? just don't let Rampage no, find out about it. Yeah, well, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's having a pig roast. Uh, uh, it's, it's like a golf tournament, and um, yeah, yeah, and then uh, and slash comedy show. I think I'm going to heckle some of the <laughs> people while they're playing golf. That's awesome. So, all right, you guys are great. Uh, take care, guys. Take care, guys. Oh, <laughs>